So our next speaker is a Gemini and Le is not a Gemini. Well, he might be a Gemini. I don't know. No, he's not a Gemini. Okay. Taurus. Okay. Our next speaker is a Taurus. He's also a Gemini and Leo award-winning filmmaker. He is currently the co-executive producer and director of The Emergency Room. This is serious. Um, it's a new series for Lark, from Lark Productions that takes on an unprecedented look inside the emergency room at Vancouver General Hospital, as well as the executive producer of the upcoming Oil Sands Karaoke, a documentary about five oil patch workers vying to win a karaoke contest in one of the most controversial places on the planet, North Alberta's Tar Sands. His other nonfiction feature credits include Do You Really Want to Know? An award-winning documentary about predictive genetic testing directed by Oscar winner John Zaritsky and Eco Pirate, the story of Paul Watson, a documentary about the iconic environmental activist that premiered at Hot Docs, won Best Documentary at Projecting Change Film Festival and was released in theaters across Canada by E1. His other directing credits include Leo Award nominated music video for post-war blues for Dan Mangan, a doc series for Animal Planet about animal hoarders, and the Gemini nominated short artist profile, Douglas Copeland, pop artist. Please welcome Kevin Eastwood. Thank you. Hello. So this first slide is from the first short film that I ever made, which I actually did at um, Emily Carr. And I just thought I'd include that there because it was where it, all of my filmmaking began. And um, because being a student from an art school is kind of a big part of my identity as a filmmaker. It's a place where you spend a lot of time thinking about visual culture, media culture, film culture, and its role in our society. While I was making that short film, I was also producing uh, this film, The Delicate Art of Parking. It was a low-budget film, uh, but it went on to being a box office success. It was picked up by Lionsgate, which is now a, a bona fide American studio, and led to us making another movie called Fido. Um, and I include that um, because the idea of making a film like Delicate Art of Parking or Fido, there's Fido with the great Billy Connolly in the middle, um, nowadays is kind of hard to imagine, um, and it has nothing to do with tax credits. It's because BC Film and the Western Office of Telefilm have had their budgets eviscerated in the last 10 years, and I don't know why we don't talk about that more. Um, BC Film put in $250,000 into Fido. They put $180,000 into Delicate Art of Parking. You don't get great filmmaking without provincial funding. Um, you don't get Don McKellar, and that's him in my music video for Dan Mangan. You don't get Don McKellar, Sarah Pauly, or David Cronenberg coming out of Ontario without the OMDC, and you don't get Denis Villeneuve, Jean-Marc Vallée or Xavier Dolan out of Quebec without Sodec. Those guys all get to make films that are nominated for Oscars and win prizes at Cannes, and we don't even get to play. BC Film doesn't provide money for production financing anymore. The next movie I'm working on is written by this amazing woman, the great Sonia Bennett. A lot of you probably know her as an actress, but she's just as talented as a writer, which is saying a lot. We're trying to raise as much money for our movie now as I had for Delicate Art of Parking 10 years ago, and it is brutally hard partly because of how hard it is to raise money for drama. Um, in the last few years, I've started making more and more documentary production. And, uh, a few years ago, I produced this movie, Eco Pirate, which is about Paul Watson, the iconic animal rights activist. Um, and I love making documentaries because you actually get to meet the characters you're putting on a screen. You get to walk in their world. I always say it's the difference between making a movie and living a movie. Um, because of I, the fact I was producing more documentaries, I started getting to direct more. And this is uh, the aforementioned Animal Hoarders, which is probably the weirdest thing on my CV, and something a lot of people raise their eyebrows about. But I loved it. I got to meet people I never otherwise would have had a chance to meet, and I got to use Animal Planet's checkbook to provide social services to people who needed it. This is the, uh, the latest documentary feature I've worked on, which is called Oil Sands Karaoke, which is premiering at VIF in two weeks from tonight. Um, it's about oil sands workers who compete in a karaoke contest. I hope you all get to see it. It's really entertaining, but it's also politically potent. Uh, the other thing I've been working on this past year is a documentary series set in this place, and that's the emergency room at Vancouver General Hospital. 
to say it's been a transformative experience doesn't come close to covering it. You spend just a little bit of time in an emergency room and you start to learn that the things that are likely to bring you down or within a hair's breadth of death are not the things you lie awake worrying about at night. It's the things that you didn't see coming. Um, time and time again, I saw people coming in because they were in a motor vehicle accident. They stepped off the curb too quickly. A wall fell on them or they're the victim of a random stabbing. I had no idea how many stabbings happened in this town until I worked um, or spent time in Vancouver General. I guess the silver lining is simply that uh, if this were the United States, those would all be gunshot wounds. To spend time in an emergency room is to really get to know your own town. And it's not just the marginalized members of society that come in there, it's everyone. I saw friends come in, I saw family members come in. I saw friends, family members, colleagues, public figures, wanted criminals, ex-lovers, sometimes the last three were all the same, just kidding. Um, everybody comes in, it's the great social equalizer. And night after night I would see these incredible people cut off the clothes of a total stranger and bring them back from the brink of death. And, you know, when you make movies and TV you're often trying to find people that do amazing things. These people are all superheroes and it was an honor to put them on my screen. So while I was in this environment, obviously, I was thinking a lot about the unpredictability of life and how it can turn on a dime and what's going to strike you down as a boulder out of the blue that you weren't expecting. And I guess just to drive the point home, the universe gave me a cardiac arrest. That's right, while I was making a documentary about the emergency room, I had a cardiac arrest of my own. <laughs> I was in LA with Sonia for meetings for that movie we were talking about, and I dropped dead outside of LAX. Sonia stepped in and performed CPR. Paramedics arrived and threw me in the back of an ambulance. They performed eight shocks on me. They didn't think they were gonna get a pulse back. They were on their way to the nearest low rent hospital. It didn't matter where they were taking me because they are just gonna pronounce me. But they got a pulse back on the eighth shock and so they turned the ambulance around. They literally turned it around movie style and went to UCLA Medical Center, one of the top medical facilities on the planet. Those are the clothes they cut off me. I still miss that shirt. Um, <laughs> most people probably have no capacity to imagine their resuscitation. I mean, it's not something you get to see. Having been in an emergency room for the past couple of months, I had a pretty vivid appreciation of the frenetic scene that must have unfolded in the trauma bay at UCLA when they brought me back to life. Once you've come back from something like that, everything's different. That's me in a coma. Everything, nothing stresses you as much. Making movies and TV, which is often a stressful thing, seems pretty easy going. Um, I try to keep it cool in most public situations, like even this, but mostly I'm just thinking, wee, <laughs> at all times. <laughs> and, you know, people say funny things to you when you've you know, had a near-death experience. They say, it wasn't your time, which is weird. And I always think, you know what? It actually was. March 18th, 2013 should have been the day I died. It should have been the date on my grave marker, not just on my hospital wristband. Um, the fact that I got to be alive and wake up to this room of amazing people, these are some of my people, some of them, and they're all amazing. Um, and I had a quarter million dollars in my chest of work after all that, uh, which is the same amount of money that, you know, BC Film put into Fido, so it just shows you you should invest in things worth keeping. Um, <laughs> point is, um, you see things differently, and you kind of think the way that you probably should have been thinking anyways, that every day is a gift, um, and that, that's Sonia and her baby. Sonia, when she was giving me CPR, was seven months pregnant, and that added weight helped circulate oxygen to my brain, and why I'm standing here. <laughs> Uh, so, it's important to make good films, yes, but I also think that you should um, savor the fact that any day uh, is an extra day that you may have not have had to happen. Otherwise, you never know when it's going to end. Thank you. Thank you.